two, here we go. We're going to go live. Hi, Margaret. I hope this is hey. clear. Yeah, you're clear. Um, okay. I am here. Let's, I just want to make sure I just have to home oh, her. Let's see. Oop. Sorry, it's just taking a minute here. That's okay. All right, we're going. Okay. And all right, so welcome to March Home Birth Cafe. Um, and we have Sanjana here, and I am so excited that you are here. And um, yeah, so Sanjana, let's get this going. Hi, everyone. <laughs> I am so excited to be here. Uh, so I'm currently in India where it's 4.30 a.m. and I don't feel a shred of sleep right now. And uh, I, I'm i just uh, honored to be part of uh, your birth cafe, Margaret. And I'm excited to answer a bunch of questions and just get into any experiences. And yeah, like basically share some stories that are heartful and inspiring for moms to be hopefully and increase yeah. the number of positive stories out there to balance out the horror stories. <laughs> yeah, it's so important. So I'm Margaret, for those that don't know me, I'm a birth keeper, um, doula, all for home birth. Um, I spent 21 years in the nursing um, as a hospice oncology nurse, and mostly as an oncology nurse and a little bit of hospice, and um, left my uh, nursing job um, about almost two years now, and um, really have a real passion for um, home birth. So I am like the hospital can be um, very, oh, what's the word? There's so many words that you come up with, but um, still can be. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I mean, it can be a good experience, which seems to be pretty rare, and it could be a traumatic experience, or it cannot be a not so okay experience. So, and um, that is really why um, I will be encouraging home birth because women have such power and capabilities and our bodies are meant to birth and intervent a lot of times at the hospital interventions or intervening happens. So um, that is just where my heart is right, right now is really, especially for women that are going, want to try, want to go home birth, but they've had a, a hospital experience that wasn't so okay and they want to do a home birth but there's all these questions about what if and what about uh, what okay yeah I want to do a home birth but so um because I know what it's like to leave that medical atmosphere especially being lived in it for 21 years so I get it so I want to hear a little bit more about you and how you went from wanting a hospital birth at a trauma center that had a NICU and deciding to have a home birth. So oh, um, a lot of what you just spoke of about the hospital birth rings true for me. Um, again, just to introduce myself, I'm Sanjana and I have been teaching yoga for many years in my life now. And now I use yoga as a tool to help people through 
their personal transformation and live more joyfully and powerfully. So, um, and just uh, let me say, we, you and I share, I mean, I worked with a client and you actually, I, you, we worked together and you worked with her on the yoga part and you were very instrumental um, also in getting her into a place of being calm for birth. And I just remember that being a really special, even in the delivery room, you were very oh. present, even though you weren't there in person, um, but you oh made goodness. a big difference. That means a lot. Thank you. Uh, yes, I remember that experience. I remember. <laughs> um, in my own birth, um, like you stated, we when we first got pregnant, um, we really didn't know what to do because we were first time parents. And um, it all began it, like my default was my default go to was go to a hospital, right? Go to the hospital, which is where my primary care was. And uh, Obviously, I'm going to birth in a hospital because what else is there? I had no knowledge of anything outside of that. Uh, so we call my we call my primary, and uh, we're starting to chat, and I'm really excited because I've just found out that I'm pregnant, and I didn't really know should I wait for a signal from her, like should I wait on a confirmation from her that I'm pregnant, right? So that itself was indication of me uh, sort of waiting on that external. Uh, you know, like that authority to say, yes, you are pregnant, even though I have that test, which just turned pregnant, which is like yelling pregnant, pregnant, pregnant right there in my hand. But we call my uh, primary and uh, she didn't bat an eyelid. She's been with me for the last five years and she's like, oh, okay, you're pregnant. That's great. That's great news. So you're going to want to uh, go ahead and do these procedures and then go into like, just do these tests anyway, start taking vitamin, you know, like your vitamin supplements. And I, I was like, wait, am I I just missed, I skipped a beat there. And uh, I was, I guess, hoping for a little more involvement and a little more excitement. I mean, uh, I get it. She was a busy doctor. She probably had a long day and she's done like hundreds of deliveries perhaps. And uh, she was just like, okay, wonderful. Now let's get going. Um, however, this was my first pregnancy and it was my first birthing in my, my experience. So while she was really efficient and I loved the practicality of the whole thing, I was really left, something felt amiss. I was left wanting. Also, this was bang in the middle of COVID in 2020, where isolation was like social isolation was the theme of the day. And I was really looking for some connection. So that was my first brush up against the hospital system and which felt sort of misaligned. And um, I sort of put it away quickly. And the next thing that happened was, um, when I went up and met with the obstetrician, obstetricians actually, because there's, according to the uh, the Western medical system right now, the way that it's organized, there is not going to be one doctor that you create a relationship that deepens over time with. It's just, you go there and then there's one person that meets you, looks at you, does like a set of like uh, predetermined checks and then the Doppler scan and, and then you come back and then everything's like check, check, check. Yes, you're okay. or this is a concern, check it out. Um, I, was, I was honestly surprised and it just didn't align with my vision for what I hoped uh, for a birthing experience. Um, our interactions, the doctors were, I mean, this is not a blame game. I just wanna be clear, right? The doctors were kind, they were efficient, they were clear and our interactions were impersonal, they were clinical, and they were really dry, right? It's just, I go in there, I'm another case number, and then they look at the, the checks, and then they're doing the Doppler scan, they're like, all okay, okay, see you, see you next month, right? Yeah. And that, to me, shook me up inside, because I looked forward to making these trips to the hospital to connect with the doctor, to the expert, who would sort of guide me through this experience, which, to me, was an initiation. It was a rite of passage. It was a spiritual move for me. Um, so that happened, and, and it was an exact replica of that same thing with the radiologist or with the with the geneticist or everybody that I met along the way in the hospital system was just. Um, it was a very face to face, and then forget about that thing, right? E including the person who did the ultrasound and actually helped me see the baby. She was like, "Oh, that's cool. Yeah, awesome." Uh, at the end of it, what was what was your name again? 
right? It was that sort of a <laughs> Oh my word. Lovely, and that's all it was. Right? You're just growing another human being, right? It's no big deal. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. So, so oh you're right. Like, while I see the practicality of the whole thing, and while I can see that efficiency is a god to the, the hospital system, um, it really lacks, it really lacked for me in my experience, and I've heard so many mothers say this, that honoring of the sanctity of that bond between mother and child and the building of that bond, it fails to honor the, the power that a woman can come into while birthing her own baby, just knowing that she's innately capable of that. And just to rely on herself and her sensation and that knowledge that comes from within. I think that's one of the things that I see is that the w- woman's choice is taken away of yeah. like, there's like this doctors and, 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 ner- and us nurses. And um, we kind of sometimes play this little bit of ranking and the aspect that we know all the answers, right. And we know <laughs> what's best. And it's just not a place for birth, right? Because nobody knows better than the mom knowing what's going in on with her baby and also intuitively being so connected that a doctor can't have that, a nurse can't have that, that, that special bond. Yeah, 100%. So in that How journey you- for me, what? That's when I started, sorry, I was just saying, because I found that aspect to be lacking, mm-hmm. that still didn't shift my uh, thinking to wanting a home birth, because I was like, there's something missing at the hospital. I need somebody who's going to be, who's going to be a stand for me, who's going to be a stand for this, this sacred space and hold it for me. So I started looking for a doula. And, <laughs> yeah. And um, I didn't know where to look. I didn't know what to do. So when I did, uh, I interviewed a bunch of doulas who who were really nice again, who were just really good at their thing. And I didn't quite connect, right? Something was missing. And the worst part was I couldn't articulate as a first time expecting mom. I didn't know what I wanted from them, but I knew that the thing that I was looking for was not there. So... I kept going and I kept interviewing. And then at one point after like five or six people, I said, maybe I just have like an unrealistic, unrealistic expectation of what a birth should look like. Mm. Um, and that was really disheartening. Uh, just yeah. thinking of going back into that space. And uh, it, took, it took a while, of course. But at that point, our doula showed up in our life. And it was just magical. She was like an incarnation of all the wishes and hopes that I had. She was like an elder in the realm of birth. And she was nurturing. She was strong. She was loving. She held that space strongly. And the best part was she didn't push for a home birth. Like she didn't say, oh, home birth is like, oh, rah, rah, rah for home birth. Because she knew where I was coming from. Uh And uh, (laughs) what she did was she educated us really really well and she pointed us to like great resources all evidence-based resources because of course both both of us are engineers my husband and I remember coming from that space of um, <laughs> let's we are heart-based and let's also see the science like we, we want to both um, right. but anyway she appealed to that to fear that was ruling the day to be honest which is why I wanted my criteria for picking a hospital was, does that hospital have like a level three NICU? Yes, it does. Okay, let's go there. Right, so. I get it. I totally understand it too. <laughs> <laughs> Which in retrospect is, is it's, it's, not a, it's not the best way to pick your birthing, uh, your choice of birth. But Anna sort of let us be in that space while she continued to educate us about a physiologic birth. Yes. And I didn't, even think it was possible, right? Even though my grandmother and my mother have been through those births here in India, I had just sort of put that away as like, oh, it's ancient. It's it's just like, they didn't have the technology at that point. They're just, you know, (laughs) they're just not, 
really scientific. So uh, with Anna, she really brought the evidence-based uh, research into our focus. Mm -hmm. And slowly, I started acquainting myself with, uh, with all of the practices in the medical field, which, are, which just seemed like such a hangover from a system that is clinging on to, it comes from a very fear-based perspective. Mm -hmm. And uh, while efficiency is amazing, it's required. And while minimizing risk is absolutely required, I saw that it's coming at the cost, at like a ruthless cost of that sanctity of the mother-baby bond. It, the interventions actually intrude into the space where the mother can feel empowered and go through a good birth, a birth where she can trust herself to go through a natural birth that's unmedicated, that is powerful, leaves her healing faster, leaves her totally ready to breastfeed the baby if she chooses to, right? And all of those things were things that I wanted. So when Anna brought that into our perspective, I slowly started shifting my mind it started to shift from, oh my God, like level three NICU required to, I've got this. I can do this myself. And my baby is going to be my guiding light. And it also helped to, um, yeah. So basically Anna helped us like really like get educated around all the practices that are really archaic, that don't need to be there for a low risk like a low-risk right. regular pregnancy, right? right? Yeah. This is yeah. not a bashing yeah. of the hospital system. It's excellent and really yeah. required for those of us who need it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah. in my case, although I was classified as a high-risk pregnancy, which was another thing that played on my mind because I was 35, although in the best health of my life. I um, know. It's, what is with that, right? Yeah. <laughs> you're, you're a geriatric patient. <laughs> yes, I was a geriatric pregnancy and it really struck me. <laughs> And, you know, I see that. Yes. Okay. Above 35, there's a statistical chance right. of chromosomal defects and miscarriage and yada, yada, yada. I, you know, yeah, medically it's a statistic, but it's not a diagnosis, you know? So, right. So it was, yeah. And uh, it's, and, and you're literally labeled that. And there's like, when you go into the hospital, you're labeled with that. So it's already in your charts. It's already there. And so there's certain protocols that have to happen has to happen this way because you're geriatric pregnancy geriatric. you know yeah. and it's like yeah. oh my goodness okay let's it, it doesn't matter that you're in it's not sub it's not it's like everybody's in this category over 35 even if you personally are in the best health that you've ever been or oh, yeah. and it's 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 so yeah I hear what you're you're saying I think one thing that I'm getting from, from what you're saying is that you had this vision that you really wanted, right? You had this vision of what birth should look like. And when you were going through the hospital and, you know, with the doctor's appointments and everything, you were starting to see that your, what your vision was and what was happening wasn't aligned. It was like mismatch. And I, I really like commend you for like one noticing that and just like okay this is miss let's look outside this let's get more education and so you went and you got your doula and you still there was some mismatch however there is one that came along because you held on to your vision and you i mean you could have easily had said and had said well that's the only option i have is to birth in the hospital but Again, you educated yourself, you, and you got the support. And I think that's like kudos to you because not everyone would have, they would have said, oh, my only option, I just have to go to the hospital. Yeah, um, it was, I think uh, the other key thing in your, in, you know, we've learned this together, um, whom you surround yourself with makes a huge difference. And uh, it was huge for me because when I even started to share with a few of my friends, they're really good friends and they're, they're some of my best friends. Um, they thought I was like completely cuckoo for even considering a home birth, right? They're like, what? You want to birth at home? Like, why would you do that? Like, 
<laughs> yeah, that's for hippies and that's for like people who, who don't know how to get to hospitals. <laughs> so initially it was, uh, I started to hide the fact that I even wanted a home birth because every conversation just sort of ended in uh, as, <laughs> you know, the other person trying to convince me that oh, the hospital birth is the safe, responsible option to take. But luckily for us, my midwife, whom we found uh, a little later, completely aligned. She was an RN too for like 33 years in the system. And she's seen both sides and she really advocated for home birth. While Anna kept gently moving me into that space, she nourished me and she held me. Yelena was like, home birth is the way to go. Do you know why? This is why. <laughs> Um, I know exactly. I mean, it's really, it's like been one of the challenges, right? For me, even is like, I totally get and understand why someone would want to go to the hospital, especially as a first time. But also I know what it is like when you're in the hospital. And yes, I didn't do labor and delivery, but I did 10 hospital births and they were every single one was very traumatic, it was not tr not very traumatic, had things that afterwards my clients would be saying, I don't know if that was really the what was needed. And then the very last one was very traumatic. And um and she it, it was just like Margaret, they lied to me. And it's so hard to to like to really explain to people without feeling like feeling like oh I'm like bashing medical I am not bashing medical I'm still I'm still very scientific I'm you know I, I mean I love science right and I love helping people but at the same time we have to realize what is the cost and what is being and and for birth this it's not it's not okay it's not okay but I can get I can get a little like dramatic in the, in my position where like like you were saying with Anna which was is beautiful that's her lane too it's like what do you we have to find this place where I'm like I have I had to make a choice I couldn't be in both I couldn't be in the medical and be supporting home birth it was just like too confusing for myself and so I had to honor myself and make that choice but it it was not an easy choice right I have to commend you for taking that leap because it was it was a big leap of faith and it's amazing that you're here championing championing this cause because I think it's necessary and required and very much in need of more champions. So it could, yes. it could take as many champions as it could get. <laughs> yeah. So how was your husband with all of this? Uh, my husband, uh, he was also, obviously he had no idea of home births just as I didn't. And initially he was like very happy with the hospital. And obviously he didn't get the whole, there's no connection that's impersonal. Um, and I would talk to my sister and I would talk to, you know, just to get the, she was constantly connected and way it's source of strength and support. Um, but in person, she was in India, I was in California and it just didn't, it was not, you know, which just wasn't happening. But um, over time, when Anna came to speak to us, she always spoke to the both of us, right? And she obviously had her sessions with me where she helped me like figure out um, how to keep myself more comfortable, like how to work the baby if it's moving into a certain position and all of that. But Vish was like a part of all of those sessions. And that really helped because he was seeing those same requests coming from uh, an expert in the field who'd been in the field, who'd been doing the work and then who was educated and who shared all of these resources with us. So he sort of tentatively walked over into the home birth territory and he said, wow, if, if this is what an intervention is doing, right? If they don't, if skin to skin contact, something like that is just not, not prioritized, or if they're just gonna insist on harsh lights, if they're not gonna let you take a position of your choice and birth in a way that makes you feel empowered, then we should, do a home birth where you feel secure, where you feel safe, because that's going to make a world of a difference to the baby that's going to come through. And to me, of course. So he, he slowly but surely uh, jumped ship, you know, and he was like, yeah, home birth all the way through. And because he's a researcher, <laughs> he was simply amazing. Now. <laughs> in the, yeah. 
he just really brought that skill to life. Like he, he brought it, he did all the research we needed to write up like the perfect, like a really good birth plan to support it with the right articles that could actually work with the establishment of the hospital, you know, all of that. And we had a great birth plan for when we actually went into the hospital for the birth, which is because my water broke at week 33, I, I was short of one week for home birth. Yeah. And uh, I couldn't have a home birth, which was my dream. And uh, what was really amazing and what I'm really grateful for is uh, how safe I felt in the hospital because I was going to be delivering a preemie. Um, is, is what we learned when we got to the hospital because uh, what we thought was going to be a two day, you know, like maybe a two day stay in the hospital and then back was, uh, it just ended up being a seven day stay and until my baby boy was here. But yeah. it really helped to have uh, Wishwat by my side and he was steady. He was of clear mind and he was really good at researching things. So all I had to do was ask him these questions and um, our team of Dula midwife and Vishwat did an excellent job of like bringing to life like that birth plan that we had in mind to whatever degree that was possible for a preemie, you know, for a premature right. child. Yeah. And I think, I mean, that's a good point because one of the things I think that's kind of scary with having a home birth, it's like, what if something happens or what if you can't, it can be kind of like, I mean, it could be like, what if, you know? But I think the important point to all of that is, you know, having a home birth, you also have a plan in case thing does go awry. So you have a plan in your head ahead of time. And then with all the support that you guys had, and then the support that your husband was, makes such a huge difference in the hospital. Oh, yes. A hundred percent, like a thousand percent. I mean, a hundred percent. And it's, and it, and it's, the partner being a part of the whole education and walking through with the, the doulas and the midwives, walking through that with them is very empowering also for the, the partner. Because in the hospital, the partner a lot of times is not, not valued and yeah. or like second guessed. And, but because the partner has had the support and knows so much he can make a stand and say this is not wanted right and a doula can do that but there's a there's a fine line how much a doula can be in the hospital and say she doesn't want that right it really needs to come from the partner right and a lot of times what happens is the mom ends up the the pregnant mom who's trying to give birth ends up having to fight her case but if a husband is a, or a partner is able to understand their role then they can say hey you talk to me i know my wife best or i know my partner best and we already have you know this understanding so then a mom can go through her labor and not have to get, it's like there's different wavelengths and a brain and you come into this thinking mind. And when you start asking questions and the moms ask questions, they come back to the thinking mind and to birth, you really need to be in these other mindsets and mind consciousness of the higher wavelength. And uh, so, and it's, it's, it's beautiful how it works out when the partner is a really part of the team. A hundred percent. I couldn't agree more because uh, uh, my husband was my rock throughout that whole delivery. Yeah. And um, while it seemed like he didn't have much to do through the pregnancy, just his willingness to come and be part of like our, we did take a, a, a birth prep course with with another, she's also um, another doula, but it was, we did that birth prep course, then we just study and we, we sort of like went through all the different stages of delivery and all of that. And we prepared ourselves to the best of our ability. And it was amazing to have a partner. I felt really blessed that he was very hands-on and with me through the whole process. It makes a huge difference for the husbands or the partners to really uh, educate themselves. Because like you said, any disturbance, during the birth 
any external impingement, any external intervention really right. proves detrimental to the process. Like it's, it's a conscious coming away from like this deep journey or going into the birth and mm -hmm. it, it really helps for someone to keep, to be a keeper of that gate, you know, and allow the woman to just go through her process. Yeah. So one of the things that um, I wanted to ask you was when, I mean, you had your vision, you got your education, you got, you know, and you also surrounded the support you and who you were surrounding yourself with was really important. So when those may, um, when you start to, I mean, because we all have second doubts, right? And we have, oh, yeah. we question whether we're really doing the right thing or what helps, I mean, I, those things helped you, the vision, the support, and this getting more knowledge for yourself but there's a big mind thinking because our thinking I'm like such a thinker right I just like I'm always in my head you know <laughs> questioning everything and even this birthing I mean leaving the medical field and going into home birth has been a birth of myself right and a birth of yeah. a business and it and it's like the mind can be such the ego and the mind can be such a big, you know, underminder. I I totally agree. Marco, did you have a I'm sorry, did you have a question? Because my internet is it's sort of like yeah. uh, it went weak so I just, and I lost you there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I know the support was very important, getting the education and everything, but our mind and our thinking sometimes can like take over and get involved and our ego gets in the way. So what helps you with that part of it? Because I think that can be a huge part of all of it. Oh yeah, I think that's a great question. Um, the thing that I used to get myself back into my body was yoga. Yoga was my tool of choice because I taught it. I've been immersed in the yoga world for the longest time. I've grown up with Ayurveda and yoga as my cultural background. Um, and for me, yoga really helped. Um, so essentially, I, I studied and I modified my practices. My physical practice, asana practice, was obviously modified to, uh, to be friendly to a growing belly into the body. Um, breathing was really huge for me. Uh, pranayama practices, right, which are, I didn't do any of the complex pranayamas, you you can't even do like a lot of them, you can't be pumping your belly and all of that. Um, but a lot of very simple breathing techniques that helped me go back to my inner experience, especially when I was either in pain or feeling fear. I remember those were really, really effective. I think I had three, if I'm right now, it's been two and a half years now. But yeah, I had the like three techniques that I trained myself on that became my go-to, right? And um, of course, like reading knowledge, and I mean spiritual knowledge, and not just about the pregnancy, but just understanding my birth as a spiritual journey was really empowering for me to see it as a mythological arc helped me come back. It, it emphasized the importance of coming back to my sensation, to what was going on within my body, rather than all the all that was like brewing in my head and my ego voice, like coming up saying, you can't do this. What are you crazy? Like, why would you want to do this? Mm. My body had the answers and I learned to trust it. The, the pregnancy was an especially amazing time for me because I had been going through this embodiment journey and you'd been there with me for a long time. And the pregnancy yeah. really was a test of, can I do uh, it? Yeah. The biggest thing that I yeah. learned from all of the yoga, all of the, um, the thing that I taught myself at that point was to relax my body uh, yeah. so that I, so I rela consciously relax my body so that I could open, so that the body could open. Yeah. So, um, of course, like in our cohort, we, we were already practicing right? Every challenge is an opportunity, right? On the flip side of a challenge is an opportunity, is a learning experience. So um, I applied that throughout my pregnancy, where I took like every challenge that came physically, right? Because I was afraid of the birthing experience. Was that going to be really painful? Can I manage it? Um, so maybe 
maybe this sounds a little odd or a little funny, but um, I had like two episodes of like horrible constipation during the pregnancy, right? And um, it was really painful. But to me, I was like, yes, this is my opportunity. I'm going to pretend like this is a small birth and see how much I can actually open my body up and allow the, allow the thing to pass, you know? Um, so it actually worked. And it, it was great. Actually, there was a great exercise. And I felt really wonderful and confident coming out the other side. <laughs> but um, in the hospital, that was what really helped me birth at the end my yoga, I use Nada yoga a lot, which is using music and using different notes to access like different aspects of body mind. But singing helped me birth the baby and feel oh, wow, beautiful sensation and pain. Actually feel it, it, it transformed my experience of pain. And I could really relate with people who speak to orgasmic birth, right? Which is yeah. a thing. Yeah. Who right. speak to... Right how pain can be transformed and only if we allow ourselves to, to surrender. Uh, see it, to surrender and to see yeah, the sensation, yeah. right? Right. And it's like with an orgasm, we're like, we get, sometimes we get so tight and then, but we need to relax. And when we surrender exactly. to it, it's like a whole different experience. Holy cow, right? <laughs> so... Absolutely. So I think that was the key thing to train myself and to, to educate myself to practice, 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 surrendering and opening and surrendering and opening, which was yeah. a falling into grace for sure. And uh, when it did happen, that's how the baby came to. And uh, I was famous uh, like across the corridors of Good Sam, right? Are you that yoga teacher who has really good pain management techniques? <laughs> I'm like, am I? <laughs> I didn't even know. <laughs> <laughs> that yeah, was fun because yeah. I was singing throughout the whole uh delivery in the ER and uh there was no screaming there was there was none of that it was just I just sang I just sang the baby out and it was it was I breathed him out of course and not that it was pain-free right far from but right it was uh the sensation was something else it wasn't just like excruciating pain <laughs> right and I, I think there's another key here in the aspect that you didn't, you, through the whole pregnancy, you were practicing these tools. It didn't yeah. start like a month before or even two months before. It was something that you started way back in pregnancy and were, and you built on it and you built your own practice. It was like a daily moment by moment through the whole pregnancy. 100%. And I would start as early as possible, like even before the pregnancy if possible, but at least at the start of the pregnancy. Yay, yay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, it's, it's, I mean, I think that's one of the things that um, for any major, I mean, birth is a major transformation, right? It's, it's someone going from even if you've had kids before, it's you're it's changing everything. It's changing as a single per. I mean, as a, a family unit of just you and your your partner going and creating a family. You're not you're not in this world by yourself anymore. You have this totally different outlook. And then even if you already have kids, you're bringing another child into it. That's going to totally change the family. So it's something that really needs to be. Work, it's a journey and it's just something that you have to do all the time and it's, and it's so cool too because you know we've 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 known each other and we've started out in 2019 in our in 200 hour teacher training and it's just so cool to see how we both have used those tools from our 200 hour and brought it into our life and brought it into 100%. the birth world and brought it into, um, you know, it's just been really neat to see how we've both grown. And I remember the first time hearing your story of how the birth went and we were in our, I think it was at our 300 training, 300 hour training <laughs> and you weren't with us, but you were on this little computer and you were telling us with the rest of us were behind you listening, looking to you. And we were just like, all of us were just like in awe of this oh. amazing 
it was not just a physical birth. It was so much more. No, no, it was, it really was. And it was, it's a pretty fun story too. And the other thing that I would really, uh, if I could, if I could tweak a few things going back is, uh -huh. I mean, it, it was, I would, for if I have a second baby now, I would get my doula really, really early on in the game. Like a doula that I really resonated with, of course, and who uh, who's aligned with my values, right? So, um, and another thing that I really uh, appreciate about Anna was, uh, just like you, I believe, um, she was constantly updating herself. So it wasn't just something that she learned and sort of put away. She was upgrading herself constantly. So she was she was studying Ayurveda. She was studying other holistic uh, therapies. She she was like well versed in like rituals across birthing uh, cultures. She was uh, well versed with like policies and hospitals and like policies across the country. Just all around, she was updating herself to keep herself as available and as um, helpful as possible. So yeah, I it was exactly easy to feel comfortable. Talking. I know exactly, Anna, I know who you're talking about. So she has this reputation of just being like, yeah. And yeah. You know, even as a new new doula, we, 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 we had lunch one time and it was just, just really encouraging, so. Yes. There was no bashing of any kind going on, even though she was like such a prominent of the hospital system, I mean, the uh, home birth thing. Uh, yeah. And she's had such, like, she's had difficult, situations come up in her life with the hospital system but there was no bashing going on there was no negativity coming yeah. from her so I I felt like that was brilliant yeah so it, yeah. it convinced me to go the home birthing route myself <laughs> yeah that's awesome that's awesome well um we're wrapping up the time here but is there anything else that you would like to share with us or I mean it's you know <sighs> heard so much and appreciate all the the insight so if I had to if I had to leave a message for moms who might be watching this I just want to say uh, there are so many birth stories out there that are encouraging that are so powerful and I watched so many of them myself before I could change my view on hospital birth versus home birth and just educate myself on both sides. So I want to like urge moms to go out there and find those positive stories because there's so many of them, although the negative stories overshadow uh, the one. Right? So uh, if anybody wants to know uh, my birth story, it's pretty fun and I'd, I'd be happy to like connect with anybody who your clients or anyone who wants to know it. Uh, happy to share it with you written if you'd like it. Uh, but yeah, I just found um, these stories really heartening when I was pregnant and expecting to deliver. So yeah, there's a lot of positive birth stories out there, probably as many or more than the negative ones. So expecting moms, go out there and find them. There's you can birth, you've got that innate knowledge in you. It just requires tapping into and thus practice. So yeah, that, that's my said. message for the moms. Oh, and beautifully said. And thank you. Margaret, thank for you. And I, I know that if anyone reached out to you, that you would be a total blessing to them. And no. Oh have such an ability to help with that anxiety part of of life that can be sometimes overwhelming yeah through the pregnancy anxiety can be overwhelming right because we have yeah. that that part's not going anywhere so yes right. i do teach i do teach uh expecting moms new moms how to work through anxiety how to work through depression and yeah go through life transformations i i'm there for people through life transitions so if anyone's interested, I'm here, happy to connect. Yeah, and um, and if anyone's watching this on the replay, just leave comments, replay, just put the hashtag replay. And Sanjana's in the group too, so just tag her on that too and tag either one of us if you have any questions or wanna know more or how to get in contact with either one of us. 
that's the best way to just put it in the comments and we'll reach out to you. And also, if you, you know, you can always DM either one of us. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much for being here and doing this with me and such an honor to have you. And I know it's like, hopefully maybe we can get a little nap before you, everyone gets up. No, my baby's going to wake up in an hour. So I'm going to get a yoga practice in uh, and I can be oh. proud of it right before the sun rises. <laughs> oh, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. All right. Well, well thank you, thank so, you so much, much for having me. It was, it was a pleasure yeah. and so glad to be part of this amazing, amazing thing that you're doing. All the very best. Oh. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.